Hello, and welcome to another episode of Spotlight On. I'm Maya Tasuka from the Camden City School District, and I'm very honored to be joined today by two of our amazing, remarkable graduates. Each June, for the last four years, Camden City School District has honored 22 amazing graduates who have overcome lots of obstacles and never stopped giving up on their education. First, we have actually four remarkable grads in the studio today, and I can't wait to speak with them all. But first, let me introduce you to William Mann and Shaquana Rogers from the Brim Medical Arts Class of 2017. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Glad to be here. Glad Thank you. Here. So last night was our remarkable graduate ceremony, and both of you guys were able to impart some really awesome wisdom on the audience members. Can you tell us a little bit about why you think your schools chose you to be remarkable graduates? William, we'll start with you. Um, okay, so I feel like I was the best candidate because you can see in the energy that I bring to being in school and around my peers and in the classroom setting that it was really no other choice but to pick me. Not saying I'm conceited or anything, but it's just I felt like it should have been me. And even I was surprised when it, when she nominated me, my guidance counselor, Ms. Hall. I was definitely surprised and very grateful and humble. Excellent. And for someone who brings so much excitement and energy to the classroom, was there ever a moment you didn't feel so motivated? Yeah, you definitely have down times when you're like, oh, maybe I'm not the right one for this one, or maybe somebody else should do it, or I'm just not gonna be here at this moment, but sometimes you gotta learn to rise to the occasion. Great, and how did you learn to rise to the occasion? What, what motivated you to go above and beyond? Mainly my mother and my father. They always instilled into me, you can always do it no matter what the circumstances, life is always gonna be hard, so, don't think that maybe all oh, because one subject was easy, this one's not going to be hard or it's going to be the same difficulty as the other one. So throughout it all, just got to push through. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Shaquana, why do you think you were named a remarkable graduate? I think it's mostly because throughout everything, throughout school, I do have like some downtime, but when people see me in the hallway, I'm always smiling. Sometimes I do like go off, but I'm always smiling. I'm always trying to help everybody, and people always tell me that I'm a leader and that I'm going to be doing great things in life. So I think that's why, because I just always like have the fun spirit to be around, and yeah, that's it. Awesome. And so you talked a little bit last night about some of your downtimes. How were you able to persevere through those low, lower moments? I have a little sister and a little brother who look up to me and I want them to keep looking up to me that, yes, it gets hard, yes, life is tough, but you still gotta persevere and get through it no matter what you go to because my family isn't the ones who overcome their greatnesses. When they get stuck on something, they stop, but I don't want them to think when you go through life, just stop when something get hard. I want them to see that, yes, life get hard, but you just got power through it. Excellent, that's really great advice. So speaking of powering through it and going to the next step, high school graduation is just one step for you guys. You're on to bigger and better things. So tell me a little bit about what's next for you, Shaquana. Well, what's next is uh, I'm going to college to, uh, my major is going to be nursing, but I really do want to be an actor on TV and stuff. I love being on stage to dance and act. So mostly that's going to be my next step, even though I'm majoring in nursing. Because like when I dance and when I'm on stage, that's just like a whole different, that's a whole different place for me. It helps me vent with stuff. So that's my next big step to be on TV. So y'all might be seeing me again on TV <laughs> again. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> this is Shaquana's first of many TV appearances. We can't wait. <laughs> and where are you going to be studying nursing? Um, at Rowan in Gloucester County. Excellent. And how about you, William? Hello. Um, I will be studying at Rowan in Gloucester County, too. I will be, my major will be in marketing. Um, my job, well, career, as I like to put it, will be an entrepreneur. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to sell skateboards and snowboards to the kids in the inner city and basically all over the United States. Something I wanted to do since I was probably like two years old. I've never, never thought about doing anything else. <laughs> so 
it's starting to it's starting to get to the point where I can probably make it happen. So I'm gonna try to make it happen. Wonderful. That's a great ambition. Good luck to you. Thanks. And also. Being a remarkable grad um, might have a lot of similarities with being an entrepreneur. Have you thought about that? What? Mm, I would definitely, because to be an entrepreneur, you have to be able to power through everything. Meaning, talking to people, um, learning how to keep your emotions in check, even though certain things might not be working for you. Being able to start from the ground up and be able to build and hold on and not just quit when you might think you're supposed to be making a million dollars, but you're only making a hundred thousand. That's basically it. Excellent. Now, our remarkable graduates are um, obviously able to achieve great things, but no one achieves things alone. Can you tell me a little bit about the people in your lives who have supported you to get you to this point, Shaquana? Um, my grandma, she helped me. I put her through a lot of stuff but she still be is my number one fan she helped me even though when i'll be just days where i'll be like i'm not doing this no more she'll tell me you have to do this because i want you to have a better life so she helped me my dance teacher miss Holmes, she helped me she's the one who helped me get into dance and acting my aunt who i go to church with she helped me a lot tell me to see that there's there are so many people but mainly those two people helped me in my life wonderful and you, William? Um, mainly, definitely my family, mostly. Um, my sister, my brothers, my mom and dad, they've always instilled in me, make sure you go, go for what you want, have confidence, and go for broke. It's nothing, it's nothing you can lose, so just let's go, do it. Then, teacher-wise, definitely my guidance counselors, all of my guidance counselors, actually. Miss um, Holmes, definitely, she's done so much for me that I never knew, like, I would even deserve, and I felt like I kind of didn't deserve it all the time, even though she still did it, which was great. So definitely a lot of people in my corner. Awesome. And there's going to be a lot of current students watching this program, youngsters um, in grades, kindergarten all the way up through high school. Um, and some of those students might be having a low moment where they feel like everything's overwhelming them. Can you just take a minute to give some advice to any student who might feel like giving up yeah. and um, offer them your words of wisdom as someone who's made it? Okay. I would definitely say before, before you make any harsh decisions or anything, please, if you do have parents or anybody that you talk to, that you see close, talk to them. Let people know how you feel because as soon as you do that, it will automatically clear almost everything in your heart so that way you can get it out of you instead of holding it in and then making a rash decision that, that might not be well for you. And then plus also definitely just calm down and ex assess every situation and think of the best way possible. Because sometimes you might think, oh, I need to quit or I can't do it. And sometimes you might even have to quit certain things because not all the time everything's going to work out for you. But as long as you feel like you made the best decision, then everything's going to work out okay. Good. Great advice. Shaquana? Um, never, to never give up that, yes, it's hard. Life gets hard. Life sometimes gets you down. But just never give up. Like he said, that, yes, some situations you might have to give up. But... Don't listen, don't follow what everybody else say. They might say, oh, you can't give up. But if in this situation you feel like I need to give up, like I tried my best, I tried the hardest that I can do, so I just need to step back for a minute, then that's fine for you to stop and step back. But just never give up. As long as you did your best and you know you did your best, then that's fine. It shouldn't matter what anybody else say. Well, thank you guys both for joining us, and the best of luck to you. You have bright, bright futures ahead of you, and we're very lucky to be able to say that we knew you when. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're just going to have a short break, and we'll be back with two more of our wonderful 2017 Remarkable graduates. Coming to school on time every day is one of the most important things a parent can do to prepare their child for success academically, at work, and in life. A day here or there may not seem like much, but students who miss just two days of school a month will end the school year a full month behind their classmates 
and we can't afford for our scholars to miss their opportunity to learn, grow, and explore. Hello, I'm Kamala Nathaniel, the district's attendance manager. Setting good habits for your child's attendance starts at home, and it does not take much. Start by first, setting a strict bedtime and morning routine. Secondly, talk about the importance of showing up at school no matter what and hang up the district calendar where everyone in your family can see it. But even with good habits, things come up that keeps kids out of school. Challenges like transportation, illness, homelessness, and family emergencies can prevent our families from getting their children to school each day. And the district attendance officers are here to help. Like most of the attendance team, I am a parent and a proud Camden graduate. Our team knows the many pressures parents face because we are parents ourselves. So when we visit families of students who have missed five days of school, it's not to lay blame, it's to offer a helping hand. Missing too much school can literally be the difference between your child's success or failures. So we take attendance seriously. Once a student has 10 or more unexcused absences, the law requires us to work with the family in truancy court. The judge and I work with parents to mandate support programs and services that help families overcome chronic absences and find solutions to get kids back in school and learning. But let's not let it get to that point. Follow the simple tips in this video to get on the right track with your child's attendance. Or you can give us a call to get the support you need. Remember, when it comes to your child's future, every day counts. Hi, and welcome back to Spotlight on Remarkable Graduates. I'm Maya Tasuka from the Camden City School District, and I'm joined by two more of our wonderful 2017 Remarkable Graduates. Welcome, Dyrell Mack and Pedro Jacquez. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to let the audience know that this year our Remarkable Graduates were able to get a lot more than just accolades, certificates, and a few awards. We actually were able to give each of the Remarkable Graduates a $1,000 cash scholarship for e each of the four years that they're studying in college. That's thanks to a generous donation from Subaru of America. This, the Remarkable grads also will be receiving um, a brand new laptop computer that they're able to use to help them um, study throughout their college education. So thank you to our sponsors at Subaru for donating such an awesome scholarship to our students. We appreciate it. Now, Pedro, you're a senior at Big Picture Learning Academy. Why do you think that your uh, teachers recommended you to be a Remarkable graduate? I think my teachers recommended me to become a remarkable graduate because the determination I, I showed during class and just not letting anything hold me back and probably even though I have um, such obstacles in my way, I look to overcome them and do the best that I can. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the obstacles that you have faced and how you overcame them? So my biggest obstacle is optic atrophy and I lived with this my whole life and I only recognized this when I was in second grade um, and it was just it was frustrating in the beginning but when I learned to live with it it came to me as like second nature to move up to the front of the class and ask the teacher for help if I don't if I can't like read something um, or I can't see anything so just to see that like out of a kid you know struggling to see the board and refusing to give up, you know, like just to fit into the crowd perfectly and no one like, because it's, it, it gets confusing to the teachers because I don't tell them, I don't like to tell people that I have a um, uh, seeing eye condition um, because I don't want to feel left out of the group. I don't want to be treated differently. I don't want to be, um, you know, put as a handicap to the rest of the class. So 
I'd like to keep my mouth shut. And a really big thing that told me to not, you know, express yourself was the time when I failed, I actually failed the test because I couldn't, I couldn't read the letters in the book. Um, I couldn't read them and I failed the test. And I went home and I cried my eyes out and I told my mom, oh, I'm going blind. I was throwing a tantrum. And um, when I called the teacher to tell him, when I called Mr. Ivone, my teacher at the time, um, to allow me a second chance because I, I couldn't see the, the book, he offered me a second chance and he printed um, the pieces, the information that I needed into a bigger font. And I got to do it again and I aced it. And that was a, a really big like sign for me, you know, don't keep your mouth shut. Like, you can't be treated like a regular kid. You're different, you know, and so you have to be treated different. Wow, that seemed like a big lesson to learn. Your teacher seems wonderful. He was also at the event last night yes. cheering you on. <laughs> Dyrell, mm -hmm. how about for you? Why do you think you were chosen by your Woodrow Wilson High School uh, team for, to be a remarkable grad? Well, Miss, it does that, you know, when people see me around doing what I always want to do and always pay attention to class, it just, you know, pick me out because, well, I'm just that kind of kid. They always say, yo, why you always want to do work? Even though you had to, why you do it? Because I love to learn. Because in life, you are going to learn some things that you're never going to be taught. Like, you're never going to learn Spanish or something like that. Well, try to learn. And I think another reason is that, too, that people always say, hey, um, that real, can you help me and stuff like that? Cause I always help out my students and stuff, like my peers, underclassmen, someone what to do. And that's kid, any freshmen come here, I, uh, come in our building, I try helping them out, giving them the class, to, um, pulling these homeroom stuff, make sure he's okay. And especially the uh, special aid kids, I make sure they get protected because some kids, you know, I want those little kids want to bully stuff. Bull those kids, and I say, yo, you ain't booing this kid. Get out of here. So, you know, make sure they're protected. And I think the third reason, too, because many teachers like, inspire me to. You know, do this other stuff, and they really right now are proud of me of taking the big moment of having these mere uh, mini talking shows and these uh, interviews and stuff. Especially my mama, she very very proud. Of me. <laughs> she said, "Darrell, I'm proud of you." That's awesome. So, tell me a little bit about that. You love learning. Um, and you have really achieved a lot in your education. Tell me about, as a younger student, if you faced an obstacle learning, how you were able to overcome it. Let's talk about my speech. I used to have um, speech during my um, little kid years. I used to hate going to speech, because you know, I could talk. But it was, it was a good thing that I take it, because it helps with my speaking, the way I talk, and the way I pronounce my L's and stuff. And I have not had speech since 11th grade because older, I know I say words. But yeah, and I think I, another obstacle I was is past my ACT. <sighs> I'm telling you, when I see that math, I was like, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? But then, I think it was like around like March, I went to this teacher called Miss Hendricks. She from the 304. Wait for it. She said, Dyrell, I'm going to help you do your math with ACT. When I, went to, when I went to that lady, study under her grams, learn some knowledge. Mm, mm, mm. Take that ACT. Guess what? I passed. It's not a high score, but it's passable. I was proud of myself. I said, Miss Hamlet, you're an angel. And then another obstacle was my economic class. Hear me out. I ain't taking freshman year. I know you need to take it to the pass. But then this teacher from my uh, G4, she used she uh, study on the camera lot. Her name is Miss Butler. <sighs> she did work through me. She said, Mr. Mack, you ain't worried about nothing. Focus everything you gotta do in your schoolwork and your test. I have you, I'm gonna help you with your economics. <sighs> she was my super, she was like superwoman right there. <sighs> I think my last one was me being uh, I'm gonna say you'll be um angry. Like I had to um, control my own anger and stuff, you know. Now I'm a patient man. 
I don't get angry. Actually, I'm just going to get back. Oh, I'm sitting there like this. Like, I wait. So, yeah, that's my full reason how I overcome, uh, you know, stuff that stopped me track. <laughs> and stuff. Cool. That's really inspirational. What, how do you think you were able to overcome anger or feel like control, better control your emotions? That's something William talked about as well. Calm, listen, and just stay calm. Because you go angry, it can always end something bad. You always have to be a patient man, always going to be thinking, you always want to be chill. Because if you become chill stuff, it's always time to be good. That's why I don't get angry. Like if somebody is trying to move while I'm trying to butt me, I say, no, man, let's go. It's not, I mean, you can wait in lines and not the food gonna be over. <laughs> you got 20 minutes. But yeah, it was like, uh, especially when I was a little kid, my English was bad. I know, woo, man, I know some schools right now saying, yo, how are you in this TV right now? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think because I went to that school, because that school was like my people were like, okay. It's time to be me. Time to be nice. Time to be mature. Time to me be overwhelming. Cause I think way here say, yo, I know in the future I'm gonna do something really good. And guess what? I'm live TV. Very good. Ooh. Excellent. Thank you. And talking about the future, Pedro, what are your plans for the future? My future plans are to go to Camden County and major in fine arts for two years, and then transfer to. Rowan for two years and study under, um, or my major is going to be 3D animation. And then after that, if I make enough money, I'm going to move out to California or San Francisco um, and work for Pixar, hopefully. Excellent. That's a big goal. If anyone from Pixar is watching, we have a future intern, future star employee here. And Dyrell, what are your plans for the future? Well, for me, I'm trying to get, uh, well, I'm going to study history for um, Bloomfield Cottage in New Jersey. It's an hour away. So, you know, I'm going to be studying hard for that history. The math is not going to be as bad. English. I type out essays, and boy, all you hear me doing this. Type all that. And I think that when I finish my uh, four years in um, Bloomfield, I think I'm going to try to uh, get to um, Forza University. You know that uh, cost and further. I think I'm trying to go for like film production or uh, be a movie actor because you know I like to act. I'm like my first pair was drama. Mr. Struck, he had us with to act and stuff. You know how to be improv and how to be like a um, actor with uh, scripts and stuff. Heck, one scene. <laughs> I mean, one scene when we had to um, be our favorite movie scene. Yeah, watch Watch Hour. Yeah. With Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker, me and my uh, dude uh, host way. He was he's a freshman. Me and him do like a, um, you know, in the car scene when Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker, you know, when Jackie Chan have the uh, suitcase and stuff, we do that. <laughs> I do Jackie Chan here, he Jackie Tucker. It was a hilarious scene. I'm not gonna lie. So you might have a feature, a future in comedic acting. Oh yes, uh, I think I'm gonna try to you know, try to make it a comedy show, but I just need to get you know more your know, joke and stuff though. But and that's not gonna work out. I could just go to history and be a history teacher, you know, help out students and stuff, give them advice for their future lives, all that stuff. Whew, give me an own joint. Mm. <laughs> that's true. Now, you guys have both overcome a lot. You're both in a really successful place right now. What advice would you give to younger students or anyone watching who might feel stuck or might feel like giving up? So my first advice is um, step out of your comfort zone. That's my first advice. And my second advice is it's okay to be different. I'm telling you, this year, on the start of this year, I decided to step out of my comfort zone. Because before that, I was shy, I was quiet, and I didn't really talk to anyone. And when I, ste when I finally stepped out of my comfort zone, that's when I, got, I get awards, that's when I get acknowledged for my determination, that's when you know, everyone is offering me all these different types of scholarships and accepting me to different high schools. And I could talk to, to you know, anybody and talk to them about anything. And it could be, we could, we could laugh, we could have fun and all this. And that's a good 
character trait to have, you know, to be social and um, just being who you are in front of people, basically. And it's okay to be different. You know, I grew up with uh, this condition in my eyes that's not curable, that's not fixable, it's not, it can't be treated or anything, it can't be cured, at least not yet. But, you know, it helps to support on other people. It helps to have somebody to lean on. It helps to, you know, tell somebody that, you know, raise your hand or something. You know, I have this eye condition or I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be, you know, on a different level than other people because everybody's not the same. Nobody's perfect. So be different. It's okay to be different and just try to step out of that comfort zone. Great advice, both pieces. Mm -hmm. Dyrell, how about you? Kids, aiming teacher, I mean, even um, teenagers, please go to your classes because a teacher can help you out. You never know that teacher can help you out on every subject or anything you need to do. And especially, we should, please be respectful to any kind of teacher. Man. Even the teachers being your mean, be respectful because you have to be polite in the world. You have to be polite. You can't be like, me, screw this teacher. No, you have to be polite. You have to. And for my, um, you know, another advice is that always learn something. Even if you don't have to, just learn something. What you, what's your interest or what you want to do? Like, even like, for example, I study French too. I don't have to take French no more. But I still want to learn it because, you know, now I'm going to go also, I'm going to go on calls with a uh, French um, guy, you know, who speaks French. I can't speak to dude, he speaks different languages. But thanks to my friends, I can speak to this dude. So, yeah. So, yeah, all I have to say is that nobody's perfect. Everybody's going to have something like a discharge or something wrong. It, it's like it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. Like, even your special aid, you can still be as a regular student or even better than a regular student if you just keep going and never stop. That's why I did. I'm special ed. It was hard for me and stuff, but now I'm natural on the side and right now I'm gonna keep doing what I have to do to make my family get a chance to also help my grandmother and my mom, you know, my dad. Get shout out to my dad. Newark man. Yeah. So yeah. Advice. Study. Be prepared. Be polite. And show these adults that some teacher will help you out, man. And yeah. It's going to be a real crazy world, but just go to your classes. <laughs> That's why I just say, kids, classes are very important. That's awesome. So that advice, if you want to be in the National Honor Society like Dyrell, you can follow his advice. That's awesome. Also, Congratulations. community service, too. It's the out of school, man. Excellent. Wow, that's, a, that's some really great advice, both of you guys. Thank you very much. Now, the last thing I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned this a little bit, but the people who have helped you along the way. You've mentioned teachers. Um, talk a little bit about the, bar the barriers or obstacles you faced and the people who were able to help you overcome them. Darrell, I'll start with you. I say to my mom, grandma, uncle, that's all my uncles, my friends who have uh, been here for like my four, four years and you know, Wilson Wilson, Spacey, our uh, senior pr uh, president, Yasana Davis, good girl, check her sister to me. And I had to say, Ms. Pruitt, our kind counselor, of Ms. Richard, and the rest of the staff, people who were in Wilson, uh, Woodrow Wilson, uh, Woodrow, sorry, Woodrow Wilson. And also, I get shout out to uh, Mr. Levy, who uh, really make an impact on school, man. I mean, very impact. I mean, he, one of the main people who, Make dream problem happen. I was shot. I was sad. Yo, these dreams have a good year. But yeah, basically, all my shouts are for my mom, family, teachers, staff, even the people around here too. You too, miss. Because okay. I get to, you know, get in TV and show everybody that just because you're special ed doesn't mean you're, gonna, you're not going to be a failure. You can be the best if you just put your mind to it. Remember, knowledge is power. Awesome. Thank you. And 
for the people, uh, well, not for the people, but I feel like I'm inspired by everyone as a whole, you know, even Mr. Mack here and you and the two people, uh, the two students before beforehand, and even the ceremony. I just got a lot of information. I get a lot of information from everybody, and even if it's like people on the street, um, my neighbors, my friends, uh, my teachers, my parents, everybody. It's everyone. You can learn anything from anyone. You learn something new every day. Um, I have experienced a lot of things over the years, and one thing is that everyone has something to say. Everyone has something to teach you, and I really took took that into like account when I met this when I met a man. You know, like he's homeless, and he was telling me like. You got to make sure to do your schoolwork. You got to make sure you're doing this and that. You got to make sure you're being successful. And he told me, like, when, you, when you're up there, when you're, like, you know, you're bathing in money, make sure to remember where you came from and, and come back and support us, you know, provide opportunities for us, like people like me, you know, to, to like, pick up the people around you, you know, and make sure to help out and be humble and be grateful for how you grew up, how, how um, people treated you, and what people gave you. Wow, that was some really awesome advice, guys. Um, I think the younger students watching are definitely going to have a lot to think about and a, lot, um, a nice plan ahead of them based on your advice. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to congratulate you again on being named 2017 Remarkable Graduates. Um, I look forward to meeting you guys again to give you your brand new laptops to help you in college. And you need to make sure that um, your grades stay up so you continue getting that uh, annual college scholarship, okay? I'm really proud of you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. One time, man. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Big Mac. So this has been another episode of Spotlight On, and quite a special episode. Every June, all of our graduating seniors deserve praise and accomplishment for, um, and praise for achieving a job well done. But our 22 remarkable graduates deserve an extra special round of applause from us all here in the city of Camden for working extra hard to show that anything is possible with a dedicated mind and a strong support system. Thank you and have a good day.